Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I'm excited to introduce a new friend to you. And uh, this is Tina Guymar. And we met over Facebook. And we're in lots of uh, different, especially women's entrepreneur groups together. And uh, we connected not that long ago, and she recently just had me on her podcast. And after that interview, I'm like, oh, you've got to come on my podcast. So I want to welcome Tina. Her and Deborah Rogers are the co-founders of the Elite Nady Ladies Network, where their mission is to empower women to stand up, stand out, and stand proud in life and in business. The Elite Ladies Network was formed to create an online community of like-minded women, who are on a mission to make an impact. And uh, so welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so today I know you come and you're going to talk to us about unleashing your greatest potential. And so you're also going to talk about the Elite and Ladies Network, but we also have lots of gentlemen listeners. So you're going to talk about that topic of being able to achieve your greatest potential in life. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. But first of all, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? So, um, yes, I'm Tina and I am from Rhode Island. And I've been born and raised in Rhode Island. Um, I have my real estate license here. My main passion and focus is on life coaching. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm passionate about that because I was in the accounting industry for over 20 years. And for a good portion of that time, I loved my job. You know, I loved what I was doing. I was moving up the ranks and then a lot of things started happening in my personal and professional life back in 2015. And I lost my purpose and my passion. Mm. And I didn't like the person that I had become. And mm. I had to do a lot of work on myself to mm. really say, okay, what is it what is this life that I've created for myself and my family? I'm constantly working. Uh, if I'm not at work working, I'm at home working on my laptop, you know, and I just really didn't have a life. I wasn't taking care of myself. And oh, I had come to the realization that this is not all that life is supposed to be about. And I was miserable. I was very miserable. I had gotten to the point where I really didn't like who I was anymore. So I went on this journey to really improve myself. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I've always kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit throughout the years. Yeah. I just felt like for me as a wife and a mom, and I had the house and I had to have the medical benefits that I couldn't go off and do my own thing which is a yes. huge limiting belief, right? Because <laughs> you got responsibilities. Yeah, you have responsibilities. And, you know, so it, it got to the point where I was making my own self sick, where I'm like, okay, I have to do something because this is not where I want to be at this point in my life. Um, so it's been quite a journey. And, you know, I went all in full time on my real estate and my coaching. And that's how Elite Ladies Network came about. Mm -hmm. And even though it's Elite Ladies Network, we're not just specific to women. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's an entrepreneur or that's been studying entrepreneurship knows that you really need to niche down. And mm -hmm. our main target market is women women that want to become an entrepreneur or women that started their own business, but they're stuck and they just need some guidance. It's not to say we won't help men because we do have some men in there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me and how I got to where I am today. And how did you meet your partner in crime, Deborah? there? So I had hired a coach and a mentor and she had the same coach and mentor and there was a lot of group coaching so we kind of connected in there and we hit it off and you know when we felt it, we were in that group for about a year i want to say a little over a year and we felt still stuck 
we, we felt like we were still missing something. So her and I got together and she lives in California. I live in Rhode Island. So it's, if we have never met in person. <laughs> it's all on Zoom, which is the awesome thing about online marketing, right? Yes. And uh, so we really hit it off. We have a lot of the same goals and objectives and we get along really great together. And we just decided, okay, well, this is not working anymore. And we saw some things shift with the coach and mentor that we necessarily did not care for. So we kind of went off on our own and we did our own research and that's, we just hit it off and we decided, okay, let's do this together because we work better together. And I, I think that's part of uh, what your program is about is is women connecting, not and men, but you know you are a ladies network, so women connecting together and you know each supplying strength that the other may not have. Correct, and that's what it's all about because you don't want to be alone on this entrepreneurship journey. Mm, true. Like for me, I don't want to have to learn and know how to do every single aspect of everything. I, I feel like it's much better if you can leverage the people that have that expertise versus trying to figure it all out on your own. So that's, that's what we're all about. Just kind of connecting everybody and seeing who can help each other. And that's, that's what we really enjoy. So what would have been the hardest part about this big transition that you made from being an accountant to being like an entrepreneur and a real estate agent and a coach? Yeah. Um, the hardest thing was the fear, the fear mm. of what if this doesn't work? Um, what, what if I can't be successful in this? And then I have to come to the realization that why can't I be? If I can be successful as an accountant, why can't I do the same thing on this end? You know, and it's always just in the back of your mind, why am I making the right decision? Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, it's how you choose to look at it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I got my MBA. I went to school part-time at night over the course of 15 years to get up my bachelor's on my MBA. And I know that I can learn anything. And for me, when I make a decision, I make a commitment and yes, I'm yeah. not going to fail. And that's one thing that I had to realize too on this journey is, yes, it's scary to go off and do something on your own, but if you're committed and dedicated, then you can absolutely be successful. Awesome. All right, so I want to let you loose to talk about unleashing your greatest potential because this is something I see. I see so many people who have that potential and yet it never gets used. It just gets, it just sits there. It's not even wasted. It's just never been. And so that's why I'm so excited for this topic today because I just think that it's about time for people to shine. Absolutely. And that's what we're all about. If you go over to our Facebook group and you look at our cover photo, it says, are you ready to shine? So that is perfect. And that's our, our free coaching group. So we pour a lot of value into our coaching group. We have about 500 members and they're just under 500. I'm waiting to be able to announce the 500 mark. So, um, but yeah, we just pour a lot. So of value. it's elite ladies network so if you want to get into that group you know let let's push this over the 500 so go to elite ladies network on facebook yes and it, if you actually go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash elite ladies network unleash that'll bring you straight to the group and awesome. maybe we'll even do a giveaway when we hit 500 members we'll see Ooh. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no cost to join that. You just go there and request mm -hmm. to join. We have a couple of questions. We just, we want it to be a safe community for our members so that they mm -hmm. can share things that they struggle with and we can help them with that. 
Um, so we just have, you know, a few group rules that we like people to acknowledge and, and say that they would follow the rules. Nothing major and that's it. You just request to join and we'll let you in. If you put your email there, we will send you the free gift that we offer on the questions. And it's all really just about meeting each other, Mm -hmm. finding out what are people struggling with because some of the members in our group they they're not on an entrepreneurship journey yet mm -hmm. but they know that they want more out of life and they yeah. know that they're not living their best life and we provide the tools to allow them to take action and change that mm -hmm. because if we don't change it then nothing's going to change right yes so that's why we put all of the tools and resources in there to help people um, to be on their journey. So let's talk a little bit um, about specifically, how can someone unleash their greatest potential? First of all, you have to recognize that you want more out of life, that you just are not gonna settle for mediocre anymore. You have to really, Figure that out for yourself and make the commitment to make a change so that you can start living your ordinary, your extraordinary life. So we all, like you said earlier, we all have this great potential inside of us. And sometimes we don't realize that because a lot of people, we don't like to give ourselves credit for anything, really. Mm -hmm. True. You know, and it's not until someone comes along and sees that in you and brings that to your attention. And that's what we like to do because you don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I'm the greatest. You know, you just want to just live life every day and not realize what that potential could mean, not realize that you could, can have these unlimited possibilities and you really can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think there's always that balance, right? Because, you know, um, we all have great potential in at least one area. So it's never about, you know, I'm the be all and end all. And on the other end, it's like, I'm a worm, right? It's somewhere in the w middle where you recognize that you've got these great strengths, talents, abilities, and skills that can help others. But on the same side, you know yourself well enough to know your, your weaknesses and the areas where you just fall flat. And so, you know, as, as we come together, um, not only as women, but as people and support each other and encourage each other and recognize those potentials and others and say, go for it. You know, we've got your back. I think it just, it allows the world to become a much better place. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because who wants to live miserably every day? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I used to live like that and I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, so it's just, yeah, once you can recognize that and make the decision, you just really have to figure out deep down what your values and beliefs are. And then you have to ask yourself, are those beliefs true? And hmm. it could just be a mindset shift on a belief that you have that will change that thinking for you so that you, that'll give you the confidence to move forward. A lot of our members struggle with confidence issues. Hmm. Um, I know I myself did when I first got into real estate. I've only been in real estate for a little over two years. But I, I struggled for a long time because I wasn't confident that I, I, didn't, I knew I didn't know everything there was about real estate and that bothered me. Mm, so yes. it really, really hurt my confidence in that area. And it wasn't until I could make that mindset shift and say, hey, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know where to go find the answers. And I think just speaking back to what you talked about at the beginning there about beliefs, it just, it made me think of a, an example. 
And I can't remember which client of mine said this, but it's in one of my client's books. Anyway, he was talking about beliefs from childhood and somehow, sometimes how, you know, we get these beliefs inside of ourselves that are not true, but we, we, we just accepted it. Um, because that's what we were told as a child. And the example that this person used is he was sitting there one day and he was in a cafeteria with a big group of people and he was eating an apple and he, he bit in and then he started spitting out the seeds. And this person beside him said, well, why are you spitting out the apple seeds? And he says, you know why? Because if you eat apple seeds, then ah." Uh, tree is going to grow in your belly <laughs> i mean isn't that true isn't that what we were all told as kids that you don't yeah. eat the apple seeds because you know it's going to grow in your belly that is so true and and the guy just stopped and he's like he's and, and he realized what he had just said and he realized how you know all these years he never ate the seeds because of you know that saying that his mother had told him as a child that he knows full well is not true but it just sat there in the back of his mind and he never ever thought about it and i think that's the thing about beliefs is that you really have to go and look at that belief and look at where it came from and really determine if that's just something you've accepted as true because it was told to you as a child or is it really truth and, you know, that it was quite a revelation for him, this fact that, wait, I can eat apple seeds. What's the big deal? <laughs> that's so, that's a good, I have not heard that story yet, but I have heard several different ones going back to childhood. And yeah, I mean, it's true. I, I believe that at one point too, that a tree was going to grow in my stomach if I ate the seeds, right? <laughs> And it's silly. You just have to question, is this really true or not? I mean, my dad used to joke around, um, you know, like it was my dad who raised me. My mom died when I was four. And my dad used to say, you know, eat your vegetables and you grow big and strong and you'll get hair on your chest. And I look <laughs> up, I'm like, but dad, I don't want hair on my chest. <laughs> I mean, my dad was always a big kidder, right? So he would say that just to get our goat, right? That's I'm like, I don't. And I mean, the thing was, I loved vegetables, right? So I'm like, but I don't want hair on my chest. <laughs> That's funny. And then so, my, yeah. sister, my sister hated vegetables. So she'd go, great, I don't want hair on my chest. I'm not eating the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> See, that'll backfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, once you can accept and uh, make the decision that you want to make a change and you go down and deep down and get those values and beliefs, the next step is to really figure out what your purpose and passion is in life. Mm -hmm. And once you can identify what that is for you, and some people, they might think it's one thing, and when they really do this assessment, they figure out, I'm really not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Yep. And it's just about figuring that out and being able to build a life around what your purpose is and what you're passionate about, because that's where you're truly going to be the happiest. Yep. And, and it's a journey. You know, this is not usually something that just happens overnight. Yep. Usually you'll start to get a sense of where you're supposed to go and you start moving towards it. And as you do, then you figure out if that's really truly what it is that you want. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. But sometimes that one thing actually leads you to the thing that you were meant to do. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's a journey that you take of exploration yep. and trying yeah. And, and you really just have to be patient with yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. like you said, it is this journey that we're on and things do change as you go along. So it does take a lot of patience. And I think too, that you're not going to have all the answers right away because a lot of times, you know, people are going to ask you questions and you may not always be able to answer them and that's okay. It's okay not to have all the answers. You know, that doesn't mean you, you give up and you quit. It just means that you have to continue searching. 
Now, sometimes, you know, with your spouses, you do have to try and give some sort of answer, you know, <laughs> especially as women, because men just don't understand us. But that's a subject for another day. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's okay not to fully understand. Like, the, you know, there was times and periods where, you know, I'd be going through transition and, you know, my husband would look at me and he's like, well, what is it that you want to do? I'm like, oh, I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, now, thankfully, you know, my husband, even though he did not get it and really didn't understand, chose to support and accept the fact that this is where his wife was at. And, you know, if he accepted it, that made me a happy camper, which made him a happy camper. <laughs> yep, that's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know that you're also an author, so why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the book that you're in? Yes, so um, about a year and a half ago, I, I had an opportunity to participate in a book project, which is called Overcoming Mediocrity, and mm -hmm. Christy Rufino, we, we met her in the women's group that we're yep. in, and she presented this opportunity to me, and I really at the time i really loved it i wanted to jump on it i just couldn't at that time mm. and then it came back around a couple months later and i said you know what this is happening for a reason and i need to just get it done so i decided to participate in the book project and it was an awesome ride i learned a lot um, there's 22 women total overcoming mediocrity where volume seven um, victorious women and I believe she actually just released volume eight so oh, wow go cool. check her out on Amazon because she does really great work and she brings a lot of women's I don't know if there's any men I think it's all women um, she brings a lot of people's stories to mm -hmm. light so I everybody in the book gets one chapter and we can tell a high level overview of our story and what our message is mm -hmm. and it was so awesome to work on that and work together with these amazing women and you've realized that you're not alone mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of people out there that have gone through similar things as you and it's great to be connected to people that are on a similar journey as you because they understand you yes yeah. yes so, so yeah. what was the hardest part about th this project? For me, the time to write my story down. <laughs> because at the time I was still working full time mm -hmm. and I had my two side businesses going, um, my coaching and my real estate and the Elite Ladies Network. And for me at that point, it was the time. When am I going to get this done? I always found myself thinking of things I wanted to put in the chapter while I was driving. And I'm like, I can't write this down. And then once I get to my destination or I forget and I, when I get home, I'm like, okay, what was it that I wanted to write down? So that was the biggest struggle for me. <laughs> I've written so many books and sometimes I get all these thoughts while I'm driving because my mind is relaxed because I'm on back country roads. I'm not in stressful city situations. And so one thing I've done is um, I've actually just texted myself. So, you know, I'd either pull over the side of the road or, you know, on, on my text, you can speak to it and it would text. So a lot of times if I just really had that idea and I say I was driving in town or whatever, I just hit the microphone button and just text myself and talk into it and text myself that, so that I wouldn't forget. That's a great so idea. So, you know, I've got all these little notes from different things, you know, titles, headlines, things I need to remember. So, yeah, it, I get it. Like, that and in the shower, too. I get lots of really great ideas in the shower. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> So, uh, Tina, how can people uh, get a hold of you, um, connect with you, and um, how can they get your book? Well, um, if you want an autographed copy of my book, you can contact me. Um, I am, yeah, can be found, my email is tina at eliteladiesnetwork.com, and 
you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Elite Ladies Network. And we also have a website, EliteLadiesNetwork.com. We're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're everywhere pretty much. Just search Elite Ladies Network, you'll find us. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. today uh, yeah. I've done a few podcast episodes today. So thank you, Tina, for being on the show today. It has been a wonderful pleasure. And I know that the listeners are going to get a lot out of what you shared today. And make sure that you connect with Tina on Facebook, become a part of the Elite Ladies Network, and learn and grow from being a part of a group, a, a, a good, strong, supportive group that's going to help you in your entrepreneurial journey. So this is Kim Thompson Pinder with my guest, Tina Guymar, and this has been Author to Authority, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>